Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. I'm Joe Biggs with Infowars.com in El Paso, Texas, right across the border from Juarez, where there are reports of an imminent threat and attack by the ISIS terrorist group, which we all know is funded by the CIA. Now, there are reports that they've heard some chatter over the radio that the threat could be a VBIED. And what that is is a vehicle-borne improvised explosive device. A driver gets in the vehicle, drives it into his target, and it flattens the place out completely. Now, is this a false flag to, to stage a reason to take our liberties away? I mean, we saw how quickly things went to hell and a martial law status was in place in Ferguson. Don't forget about that. Or is this an actual threat, a legitimate threat by ISIS on our southern borders? So this is something you need to think about, and I encourage the people watching this to comment on this at the bottom of the video on YouTube. But let me get back to another thing. If this is an actual legitimate threat, and it can be because one of the reasons El Paso, uh, Fort Bliss, this weekend shut down a lot of its main gates and only left them open for personnel with DOD cat cards. That is a white army uh, uh, ID that has a chip in it, has all their information on that. And then also all the vehicles were subject to being searched by the MPs at the gates with dogs, uh, looking for stuff like that, explosive, things of that nature. So they've, they've definitely taken that threat to be a serious threat, and they've heightened their security. Um, so that, that, that kind of adds a little bit of legitimacy to the threat. Now, another thing as well, though, if this is a real threat, will the Democrats take the blame? because they have done nothing to help secure our borders whatsoever. You know, we're, we're spending $30 million on getting these huge Border Patrol facilities built. Meanwhile, behind me is a gate that's been left open. We've seen it. You've seen the video. It's a viral video. Now, this is a main gate right off of I-10, but literally just around the corner over here is a small place that I'm going to take us to uh, tomorrow. And you can see, you can walk right across the river. It's right on the U.S.-Mexico border right there. It's not that hard. People watch these videos like, oh, it'd be so hard. No, it's not. Stop playing around with yourself. This is a serious, serious issue. And it's funny. The borders are weak. There's ISIS supposedly in Juarez right now wanting to, you know, uh, incite violence and, you know, take out targets on American soil, that's a pretty legitimate threat. Even if it doesn't happen, that's still something that you should take seriously. And if there is an actual attack that really happens on our American soil right here in a border town like El Paso, you know only a matter of time they will use that to take away our liberties. There will be martial law up and down throughout the country and every small American city and then it's going to move to everything. Tanks up and down the street. That's it Joe Biggs in El Paso. He's coming up live. Stay with us. We're going to be joined coming up at the bottom of the next hour by Joe Biggs and some of our other reporters that are on the ground in El Paso, Texas, where Homeland Security last Friday and again on Monday, said that a terror attack is imminent and that it is specific targets like Fort Bliss. Now, whether this is real or more hyped so that Homeland Security can grab more of our civil liberties and freedoms isn't even an issue because the border is wide open. We have video of the border fences a month ago, two weeks ago, and last night, wide open. They actually open the gates at night. People just pour back and forth, doing whatever they want. It's a giant facade. It's a giant joke. We noticed this about a year ago. We pointed it out in news reports about six months ago. Two weeks ago, the actual training manual for TSA came out, admitting in the memo that they have been told for years to let illegals fly with no ID. 
but citizens get their braziers grubbed, naked body scans, your genitals grubbed, your children grubbed, your shoes off, sh you know, jackets off, shoes off, all to train you that the state is God and that you're a prisoner. It's beyond security theater. And as much as I bash the individual TSA minions, most of them just want a job. Some of them are on power trips, obviously. That's come out over and over again. And a lot of them want to rob the bags and the rest of it. The people that are behind it. Are our Congress and the special interests that control them. And all over the world, this type of thing is going on in an attempt to train law-abiding citizens that they are basically prisoners. This is an induction into tyranny. So Joe Biggs coming up in an hour, about 20 minutes from now, from El Paso. He was stationed there for a while. He has a lot of sources there at the military base. And we have ICE and Border Patrol sources, obviously high up in the Border Patrol. They've been on the show. But since they've been given gag orders, basically threatened with arrest if they speak out about the admitted treason and how the Border Patrol is there now to complete the cycle of human smuggling, close quote. Think about how epically over the top that is. That Obama is in the news saying, I'm not doing immigration reform right now. And Boehner is in the news saying he's not going to do immigration reform right now until next year. And that it's a great idea and that this is a wonderful reform. Republican and Democratic leadership working together. Meanwhile, they've already basically legalized all of the illegals by fiat. Between three and five years before any of these illegals even get an immigration hearing. In fact, that that is in the news Today, judge sets hearings for illegal alien minors four years from now. The average is four years. And welfare is automatically extended. Tax refunds are automatically extended. You can get three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Some households get over $80 million a year in tax refunds in Austin, Texas. That's come out in the news and no one gets in trouble. It was over $100 million at one house in Atlanta. Now, the Democratic Party fences this money through. The people at these houses are just cutouts. They're not getting the money. I mean, do you think Akron on video was ready to run child sex slaves and, and help the Veritas Project posing as pimps run sex slaves at Akron after Akron facility. Do you think that's just where they stop, ladies and gentlemen? This is an organized crime takeover that will implode the country. Miami schools flooded with 1,400 new immigrants from Central America. Father of man killed by illegal immigrant demands president visit son's grave. That's another thing. The world is emptying out its prisons and giving them plane tickets and ship passage or bus passage to the United States. As Latin America collapses, as other areas of the world go into global meltdown, the Caribbean is in meltdown. Look up the numbers. Double the crime from what the Caribbean had just five years ago. Even places that had low crime, like Grand Cayman, are seeing an increase. The Bahamas is overrun, and one of the most dangerous places in the world now. Society is breaking down all over the planet. Every military think tank metric shows that. Secretary of Defense Hagel admits that. And what is Obama doing and his controllers but accelerating this? Problem, reaction, solution. Now, I covered immigration first because that's coming up at the bottom of the next hour. And that is clearly the end of our country that's happening right now. The bait is set to now bring unlimited numbers in as the word gets out that, hey, you get there, you get free welfare, everything gets taken care of. You become a new 
political war to the state as long as you vote for whatever the globalists want. This is the takedown plan. Geopolitically, internationally, today, the top story is this. Reuters, U.S. allies to stage exercises in West Ukraine as battles rage in the East. <sighs> this is exactly what all the experts have said would start to happen. It's what I've said. Six months ago, the Ukrainians vote to not join the EU and be sucked dry by that tyranny. Soros activates neo-Nazi paramilitary groups that overthrow the government, the elected government, which certainly wasn't perfect. I'm not saying that, but it was elected. No one disputed it was freely elected. They overthrow it, run all the way into the Russian pipelines, refineries, and oil fields that have been owned, leased, and run by Russia for 100 years. Russia's been there for 500, basically. And they try to take the Russian port, their only Black Sea port and other strategic areas. Russia sends in forces to protect them for their interest. The issue is the West initiated this, just like they initiated ISIS, which is really Al-Qaeda in Iraq, that went into Syria. Just like our government backs the Muslim Brotherhood. Just like they backed the jihadis taking down Gaddafi. Just like they're backing, trying to... Al-Qaeda's been attacking Jordan. And Soros came out and admitted responsibility in the New York Times for the coup and mass murder in Ukraine. <clears throat> and so as things escalate, notice you heard yesterday, oh, uh, NATO's going to send a rapid reaction force the next few months in case Russia invades... NATO is already in Ukraine, already in Poland, already has advisors. It's come out. There's already mercenaries. A lot of people that don't want war with Russia are trying to de-escalate it, saying, oh, Russia doesn't really have troops in eastern Ukraine. Yes, they do. And there's battles going on, a proxy war directly with Russia right now. It's not like we're having a proxy war with Russia through Vietnam or a proxy war with Russia in Angola. Or Rhodesia. The United States of America and NATO is now in a proxy war directly with mercenaries and CIA advisors with Russian troops. There's a steady stream of body bags going back to Russia of Russian troops and funerals all over the country. I've gone and checked. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, there are dead mercs and others coming back here. So I'm going to explain this again. From all the intel we have, the United States, run by George Soros and others, a known Nazi collaborator, this is like a Twilight Zone episode, has gone in, overthrown Ukraine, run over Russian interests. The Russians have inserted troops. The CIA director was over there running it. Senator Mendez has been over there running it. It's on. And if they start running airstrikes, NATO does, as they've said they will, against Russians, then Russia will start responding, shooting down those aircraft, and then it escalates to the point of where General Jackson was during the Kosovo War, when the Russians controlled that airfield that they've controlled since the end of World War II in Pristina, and they ordered NATO to attack the Russians on the airfield, and the head of NATO overruled the U.S. NATO commanders, the British head, and said, I will not start World War III. We literally, people just think we can't have a war with Russia. People just think we're not going to have a nuclear war. People just expect everything's going to go on forever like it's always. This is what's going to end up destroying our society, ladies and gentlemen. This is what's going to end up really causing a problem. U.S. allies to stage exercises in West Ukraine as battle rages in the East. Reuters, we'll come back and tell you about that. Russia's strategic nuclear forces to hold major exercise this month. Reuters. NATO weighs rapid reaction response from Eastern Europe. It's already going on. Putin orders building hastened at new Russian spaceport. It's all coming up.
Admiral General McHenry has come out and said, we helped build ISIS. Try to kill it. Weapons from Benghazi ended up in the hands of Islamic State radicals. We told you several years ago that was coming. And oh, gee, Al-Qaeda now named ISIS, now named IS to confuse the public. Why they're going to attack America now. Why the attack is imminent in Texas or on the Texas border. The Department of Homeland Security says by or on September 11th. We've got our reporters down there on the ground. Why is that border wide open? That clip is coming up. But back to the top story geopolitically. U.S. allies to stage exercise in West Ukraine as battles rage in the east. As fighting between the army and Russian-backed rebels rage in eastern Ukraine, preparations are underway near the western border for a joint military exercise this month with more than 1,000 troops from the United States and its allies. The decision to go ahead with the rapid uh, Trident exercise September 16th to 26th is seen as a sign of the commitment NATO states to support non-NATO member Ukraine while stopping well short of military intervention in the conflict. The annual exercise to take place, a training center near Ukraine's border with Poland, was initially scheduled for July, but was put back because early planning was disrupted by the crisis in the eastern part of the country. Continuing here uh, with what's unfolding in Russia, Russia is now to conduct drills with their nuclear forces, Russia's strategic nuclear forces to hold major exercise this month. The forces responsible for Russia's strategic nuclear arsenal will conduct major exercises this month involving more than 4,000 soldiers, the defense ministry said today in a latest sign of rising tension with NATO over the Ukraine crisis. In an announcement a day before the start of the NATO summit in Wales, RIA News Agency quoted the ministry as saying the exercise would take place in Altia in south central Russia and would also include around 400 technical units and extensive use of air power. The head of their strategic rocket forces is saying troops would practice countering irregular units and high precision weapons and conducting combat missions in conditions of active radio electronic jamming and intensive enemy actions in areas of troop deployment or close quarter, medium range, and short range strategic nuke war. That's basically what they're preparing for. He said enemy forces would be representative of the exercise by Russian special forces units. Supersonic MiG-31 fighter interceptors and SU-24MR reconnaissance aircraft would take part, saying the scale of the power involved was unprecedented for exercises of this type. Both Russia and NATO have stepped up military maneuvers since the outbreak of the conflict in Ukraine between government forces and pro-Russian separatists in the east of the former Soviet Republic. A Kremlin secretary advisor said Tuesday that Russia would update its military doctrine this year in light of the Ukraine crisis and sharp deterioration of relations with NATO. A new Cold War. And I'm going to say it again. I don't lionize. I don't romanticize. I don't deify any of the Russians. But the Russians are not teaching our kids 2 plus 2 equals 5 and saying if we have businesses, we didn't build them. Or that raising the debt limit doesn't raise the debt. They're not funding Al-Qaeda all over the world. They're fighting them. They're promoting Christian values now in Russia compared to us. Family values. And that's why the West, run by a bunch of mental patients, it's not even America. It's, it's the criminal nutballs that have control of our society, the military-industrial complex, and the big banks that wanted to suck Ukraine and a bunch of other former Soviet satellites dry. So they're replacing the old Soviet tyranny 20-something years ago with a new globalist tyranny. The EU operates, ladies and gentlemen, just like the old Soviet Union does. We've had members of the EU Parliament on, like Nigel Farage, many times, the head of UKIP. The head of you know, the, the outgoing president of the Czech Republic said it's the new Soviet Union. So it, it's that America is becoming super corrupt. The EU is ultra corrupt. And it's starting a fight with Russia and just pushing. It's very dangerous. 
We're going to open the phones up when we come back. Give the number. I'll get your take on this and more. I had confirmed this before with Venezuelan listeners and friends, but Reuters reports that they now pray in public school to Chavez. The news websites, my friends, are Infowars.com, because there's a war on for your mind, and PrisonPlanet.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Real Alex Jones. And you can also check out all our different Facebook pages, our YouTube pages, you name it, linked at Infowars.com. I want to get into General McInerney. I always pronounce that wrong. Saying, quote, we helped build ISIS on national television, on Fox News. We're also going to get into the fact that it is emerging the preponderance of evidence that the beheading videos are indeed fake. That doesn't mean ISIS isn't really chopping people's heads off by the tens of thousands every few months. Haven't killed over 300,000 people in Syria alone, more than 50,000 conservative estimates by Lancet and others in Iraq. Remember who's funding them and protecting them. But it, now these reporters, it's turning out, work for groups that are known CIA cutouts and are being released by the same group that got caught putting out a fake Al-Qaeda video before. And they think the public is so stupid, they upload the Al-Qaeda logos with the Defense Department logos in the same video layer. Let me explain that. It's produced at the same time on the same computer. They, they don't even care to create one copy, run it through, grab it like it's been compressed already, and then put another layer over it. So you can see the layers of compression. They just don't care. Like Obama's birth certificate was in eight different layers, completely fake, put out in the layers, not combined with the fake typewriter computer print. Each typewriter strike is different, like a snowflake or fingerprint. These were identical. Within hours, we said it was fake. Within months, top experts all came out and said the same thing because you could look at it in minutes and see it was fake. The typewriter strikes, the C's, the T's, the A's, everything was a basically Microsoft Word fake typewriter font. Meant to be fake, meant to just flaunt it in our face and see, make it all a debate that he's really from Kenya because he wasn't. That wasn't his dad. He was from Hawaii, the son of a famous communist who it turned out he would spend summers with and who was his father. All hiding in plain view. Frank Marshall Davis. Unbelievable. See how they run those psyops? That's why he announced in his Harvard Law Review journal that he was the editor of that he was born in Kenya. That's why his wife in 2007 gave three speeches saying we went back to his homeland where he was born, Kenya. Was all setting it up for us to take the bait. See how sophisticated PSYOPs are? Sotloff video found by a group responsible for releasing fake Osama bin Laden video. Group connected to Homeland Security and Government Insiders. Well, yeah, it's a Defense Department subdivision. James Foley worked under U.S. aid, a known U.S. intelligence front. He was more than just a journalist. Yeah, like... Michael Hastings, whose wife was in the National Security Council, who said, Homeland Security is after me. Oh, my God, the government's pure evil. I'm going to warn everybody. Don't let them kill me. And then his car blew up. And we've talked to his family calling up, crying, begging us, you know, no, they'll get us. Don't. I mean, they killed him. They blew him up. And then right after that, his wife got so scared, she went on Pierce Morgan and said, he died. It was completely normal and everything's fine. But see, Hastings had a soul, and when he learned about what the government was really up to and really doing, he didn't want to be part of it anymore. And, well, he knew too much, like Pat Tillman, didn't he? And all the other Army buddies and people basically got threatened and got scared. Joe Biggs didn't. That's why he works here now. That's the kind of reporters we want. James Foley worked under USAID. A known U.S. intelligence front. Was he more than just a journalist? I don't know. Do bears live in the woods? 
And Joe Biggs was groped as ISIS storms open U.S. border. InfoWars reporter Joe Biggs is groped by the TSA while heading to El Paso. And while illegals are allowed to fly without ID, that's official Homeland Security memo picked up by InfoWars.com and Breitbart. That's just some of what's going on, some of what's happening. Credible job, Josh Owens and Joe Biggs and the rest of our crew. <clears throat> I want to get to the video clip in a moment of General McErnie. We helped build ISIS in just a moment. Before we go any further, we do have a very limited supply of the Occupower that isn't just for the eyes. It's, it's known, patented, and certified compounds that are on record as rejuvenating and cleaning the cells and more. It's a supercharged formula, super strong, super powerful, and super affordable. Again, competing brands of things similar are upwards of $60 to $70. It's $29.95. Occupower, we bring you the very best organic, purified, and patented high-quality fusions very competitive, and your purchase supports the transmission. It's almost sold out. It'll be a few months till we get more. Uh, it is still uh, a few weeks, probably three, four weeks. We're hoping until we get more DNA force in. We do have the super male vitality, the super female vitality, known concentrated herbs and, and, and fruit and, and, and plant extracts that don't mimic testosterone and progesterone and things. They help the body clean out its glands and trigger them to release the natural stuff. And that's key. And all I know is that's what Dr. Group's research and others show. All I know is it works for me. I mean, anybody that's seen me in person knows that you can see it on television as well, but I still stay up late and work really hard. But I've lost a ton of weight. I'm just losing more, more, more. I keep having to buy pant sizes going down. My pants are falling off of me right now. I've gone to that phase where... You know, there's just no fat on my chest, arms, and shoulders, and it's just now drooping down. Uh, I got to like 275 pounds, and I'm down to like 220 pounds. It's just amazing that I should be about 180. And so I've got to that point just where there's like this, you know, this, this, this belly, but it's just hanging now. And just, you know, it starts getting soft and just like evaporating. And I've been working out less than I used to. I mean, I used to go on like, six, seven mile hike a couple days a week, swim two miles and just changing my diet a little bit and taking some uh, supplements, some of the InfoWarsHealth.com products. I lost about 25, 30 pounds and then I kind of gained some of it back and not working out. And then I, I just, it, it's amazing what getting True Nation Iodine Survival Shield X2 in my body has done. When you purchase the products, it funds the whole operation. But these really are groundbreaking. Take the challenge. You've heard the rave reviews. Get a bottle of Super Female for your wife. Get a bottle of Super Male for your husband or vice versa. Try it out. Uh, I'll warn you, this is all certified, you know, good, what they call FDA grass, meaning it's, it's things that are known to be safe. But it's so purified and concentrated, it took me a while to build up to even the regular dose of Super Male Vitality. It took me a while to be able to build up the regular dose of of just the regular survival shield, not even the X2. Uh, so this is not a game. When you take the fluoride shield, it's a chelator, targeting all sorts of heavy metals and things. Fluoride's the main thing it targets. Uh, it, I mean, you will detox. This is not a, these are not joke products. We want to have things that are so good, people come back over and over again. It's a win-win. Infowarslife.com or 888-253-3139. Also, purified water is essential. We have the ProPure G2 entire family, the Clearly Filtered, and other brands of high-quality filters that have the highest ratings for cutting out and reducing or completely removing, depending on the toxin, uh, at the most affordable prices. And they're also very simple to use and portable. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, or 888-253-3139. And again, thank you for your support. Thank you for spreading the word about the broadcast so that we can promote the truth and justice and reality and free market systems. All right. Headline. Infowars.com. General McErnie. We helped build ISIS. 
Weapons from Benghazi ended up in the hands of Islamic State radicals. Paul Joseph Watson, during an appearance on Fox News, General Thomas McErnie acknowledged that the United States helped build ISIS, close quote, as a result of the group obtaining weapons from Benghazi consulate in Libya, which was attacked by jihadists in September 2012. I had Lieutenant Colonel Schaefer, who ran black op operations against Al-Qaeda, on a few days after it happened, and he said it was basically an assassination of the ambassador because he wouldn't go along with the transfer of weapons to Al-Qaeda. The Turkish ambassador was there and got mad. We don't know if Obama ordered the hit or whether it was Turkey, but it was a setup and they were ordered to stand down. Now, he tried to walk it back a few days later because he still advises the Pentagon and Army War College. They completely flipped out. But then I had other sources in the CIA, some known, some unknown, Tosh Plumley and others. You've heard him on air. I mean, Google Tosh Plumley, folks. He's like ultra famous. To, to the point of, from Iran Contra hearings, church hearings, that he still flies CIA aircraft in secret operations. And he's been doing it since the late 50s. That's the kind of characters that are out there from Texas. He's from Texas. I mean, he's done interviews while he's in a C-130 loaded with weapons about to fly to the Middle East. And you go, well, why is he even allowed to operate if he's been a whistleblower twice? Because there's the light side of the whole operation that is mad about what's going on. And he legitimately has his job. And he's only gone public when it's treason. I mean, is it treason to give Stinger missiles to Al-Qaeda? He was told that by a high-level NATO official and an Army official. And I've basically been told that they're going to blow my head off if I keep interviewing people like Tosh Plumlee. Well, look, I mean, I get on the highway every day. I could die in a car wreck. I could have a stroke today. I mean, I'm not afraid to die. I don't look forward to it. I don't want to die, but I don't want to live as a slave in a country where our government is run by criminals that arm Al-Qaeda so they can run around chopping people's heads off. And then you can use the Al-Qaeda threat to take our freedoms. What I'm getting at here... is that it's a fact that if there is an Al-Qaeda attack in the next week, week and a half, or there is one in Europe or one six months or a year from now, they're saying it's imminent right now. I don't know if that's true or not. I know these jihadis are a real group. I know they're out of their minds. I know there's hundreds of thousands of them. And I know that it was in the London Telegraph yesterday and other publications that they let them fly around Europe. They let them operate on Twitter and Facebook because they're a secret army of the globalists. So here's the deal. You're going to let Al-Qaeda fly around and stuff? You're going to let me fly without putting me in a naked body scanner and grabbing my genitals. I've had enough of this. It's a fraud. It's a joke. And I'm not putting up with it anymore. I want my Bill of Rights and Constitution back right now. And the American people should be so upset about this. DHS says the number one enemy is who? You're a new lister, just search engine what I'm saying. You'll have mainstream news. Washington Post. Homeland Security stands by terror designation. Homeland Security stands behind Patriots as number one threat. Founding fathers would not be welcome in today's army. Fox News after we broke it. DOD training manual. Extremist founding fathers would not be welcome in today's army. You can read the official Department of Defense training manual. It's not even secret. Obviously, these are the bad guys trying to teach our military the founders wouldn't be welcome in our military. Well, that shows what our military is being turned into. Our government promotes open socialism and communism now. The borders are wide open. Fort Hood soldiers were told that Christians, Tea Partiers, a radical terror threat, they could be court-martialed for it. After we broke the document, Fox News picked it up. We did a part two article. In fact, click on that blue link for TV viewers. Fox News. And Fox News had a headline like, well, maybe does Army consider Christians Tea Party a terror threat? Then you read it and it says that. It says you'll be court-martialed. <clears throat> Since when can you not be an evangelical Christian or give money to the Tea Party? But see... They're on MSNBC promoting, saying, Democrats, if you want free handouts and goodies, 
you better give money to the Democratic Party. Blue collar people, you better give money to the Democratic Party. They fundraise for the Democrats on MSNBC. But then you want to be a pro-life group just promoting don't kill babies? We're going to come shut you down and take your tax exemption. Oh, you're, an event, you're a Christian group? You're a patriot group? We're going to audit every Tea Party group out there. Well, that's meant to intimidate you. But it's also meant so you can't organize. I mean, this is a takeover. And I've cut my teeth attacking Republican neocons and warmongers and the rest of them. The point is, is that you've got the globalists. It's bad enough to only have two big parties. They're whacking the Republican Party right now. And John Boehner's double dealing, making deals, playing golf with Obama, selling us out. It's all a big, sick joke. It's not enough to get rid of Eric Cantor. We've got to get rid of every one of these fake Republicans, and we could save this country. That's why the entire power structure for the 2014 elections, Republican Democratic leadership, has everything they've got, all their big political guns, pointed directly at the real Tea Party that promotes Second Amendment, national sovereignty, basic things. Because the globalists want to get rid of all the old existing Bill of Rights, Constitution, checks and balances so they can fully take control of our society. Let's go to this uh, General McInerney clip admitting that our government helped give missiles to al-Qaeda. Here it is. Two different things in the Ukraine and in Syria. Uh, Syria, we backed, I believe, in some cases, some of the wrong people and uh, not in the right part of the Free Syrian Army, and that's a little confusing to people. So uh, I've always maintained to go back quite some time that we were backing the wrong types. I think it's going to turn out maybe this weekend in a new special that Brett Baer is going to have Friday that's going to show some of those weapons from Benghazi ended up in the hands of ISIS. So we helped build ISIS. Now there's a danger there, and I I'm with you. But in the Ukraine, we need to show support in uh, Iraq against Syria and uh, in Iraq. Uh, we need to show support that we're going to go and take down, I believe, take down ISIS. And we can do that without boosting Bashir al-Assad. Okay, if we back for that. Right I've group. never heard such deceptive spin right there. We need to show support against Syria, ISIS. See, they create ISIS, arm them, protect them, try to bring down Assad with them, and now, oh, we need to attack Syria to get ISIS, they're going to attack Assad. I mean, this is just, it's just incredible what they get away with. Let's get serious here, ladies and gentlemen. Venezuelan Socialist Party swaps God for Chavez prayer. And I knew that in some of the old Soviet republics, they would have children. I know Cuba did this, and I talked to refugees from Venezuela and a computer programmer that we had did some freelance work for us as well, whose parents ran a school in Venezuela. And when the government nationalized it, they basically just made them work for basically free or they would just take it away from them. That you would set milk in front of the little kids and cereal in the morning. Well, first you'd have the kids all sit down in first period, you know, start a school, and say, all right, pray to Jesus for milk and cereal. Oh, Hey, Zeus, please give me milk and cereal. Open your eyes. There's no milk and cereal. This is when Chavez was alive. Then they would pray to Chavez to give them milk and cereal, and there would be milk and cereal. They would then pray for their lunch. There would be lunch. And so the children learned that the state was God. Well, this is in Reuters now. Venezuelan Socialist Party swaps God for Chavez in new prayer. It'd be better to pray to the sun if you want to be a pagan instead of praying to Chavez. At least the sun actually gives you life. <laughs> People don't even think about the sun. A member of Venezuela's Socialist Party has rolled out a variation of the classic Christian Lord's Prayer to implore beloved late leader Hugo Chavez for protection from the evils of capitalism. Well, the only evil of capitalism is you become so wealthy, your kids become spoiled brats. Here's the prayer. Our Chavez who art in heaven, the earth, the sea, and who delegates, red-shirted delegate Maria Estrella recited on Monday at the PSUV Party Congress.
continuing with the blasphemous prayer. Hallowed be thy name. May your legacy come to us so we can spread it to people here and elsewhere. Give us your light to guide us every day, she said in front of an image of Chavez. I'm going to vomit. Lead us not into temptation of capitalism. Deliver us from the evil of oligarchy like the crime of contraband because ours is the homeland. The peace and life forever and ever. Amen. Viva Chavez, she exclaimed. To applause. Though Chavez died of cancer in 2013, he remains omnipresent in Venezuela. His photo is plastered all over capital Caracas. State TV frequently airs excerpts of his famous lengthy speeches and supporters sometimes don earrings or pendants with an artistic black and white rendition of his eyes. Oh, man. And again, it's not the, the well-to-do or the artisans or all the great people of Latin America that have jobs. They're being fed on by communists down there that are moving up here. It's all the just dumbed down socialists that want a free ride handout. Don't care their standard of living has clearly gone down in the last 17 years of Chavezian rule. Or 16 years. And it's all just a complete fraud and a joke. And the government people live in giant command bases with helicopters totally rich. And they're running around robbing and destroying the middle class so the country's collapsing. And they can't even keep the electricity on. Communism doesn't deliver. Communism doesn't deliver. Visit Communism is dead. Communism is run by offshore bankers. Ah! All right, I'm going to open the phones up right now to get your take on General McCurney admitting that the West helped build Al-Qaeda, ISIS. Sought law video uh, found by group responsible for releasing fake Osama bin Laden video previously. James Foley worked under U.S. aid, a known U.S. intelligence front, was more than just a journalist. Reporter groped by TSA on way to the border. All border is wide open. Coming up, top expert warns of inevitable Fukushima disaster in California with reactors on fault lines. 30 million Americans on antidepressants and 21 other facts about America's endless pharmacological nightmare. U.S. allies to stage exercise in West Ukraine as battles rage in the east. Russia's strategic nuclear forces to hold major exercises. And judges are releasing the illegals saying come back to court in four years. What do you think about praying to Hugo Chavez in Reuters? That's some of the news I've already hit. We've got Jennifer Lawrence calls for probe and to leak nude photos. Apple investigates app. It's on a cloud, Jennifer Lawrence. You put your naked photos up on a server that you that, that wasn't natively on your phone. It's bad enough to put it on your home computer or something where somebody can get in and get it. If you don't want naked photos out there, get a regular camera with the memory card and view it on a tablet or something not hooked to the Internet. I don't know how else to explain this to people. Let's probe it. Well, let, what are you going to think when they start taxing us by the mile in the next two years? That's now been announced and is official. This stuff's all real. Denying it doesn't make it go away. That's why I just want to get all the dirt out there, let people know what's going on. Not trying to be negative. It's very positive. It's like lancing a boil. Or if you've got an infected tooth needs a root canal, you know, getting, getting the tooth fixed we need to admit we've got a big pus-filled root. Get in there and clean it out or pull that tooth. And I just physically, socially, spiritually feel the big rotting tooth and, and, and the big abscess in our cultural jaw. And I want that sucker out of there. Doesn't mean everything's going to be perfect. I mean, we won't get another political uh, toothache down the road, but we need to get that big scrofulous filled, pus filled new world or tooth out of there or the disease will rot into the entire jaw, get into the sinus, and we will get some type of uh, bacterial meningitis of the political brain, which we already have, and then we'll be in a coma, and then dee, the kidneys will fail, and the whole society is going to go down. And the globalists have decided they're going to just perch on the dead body and somehow get sustenance out of that. I'm using this analogy because uh, I think it makes sense. Toll-free number to join us 
on the waterfront. Wide open phones, first time callers, long time callers. Any subject you want to raise, just be ready, focus. We don't screen your calls. Have your point ready. 800 259 9231. 800 259 9231. Remember Jamie Foxx prayed to Obama. He said, thank God, thank Obama for everything. Our Lord and Savior, Barack Obama, Barack Obama. Maybe I'm an extremist. Maybe it's racist that I don't pray to Hugo Chavez. I just can't get over the prayer. Hallowed be thy name. May your legacy come to us so we can spread it to the people here and elsewhere. Give us your light to guide us every day. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil of the oligarchy. Our Chavez who art in heaven, the earth and sea, and we delegates. Just, this is on TV in, in Venezuela. This is Twilight Zone. This is in Reuters. This is what you stupid socialists like. Well, it's coming out that the latest person reportedly beheaded, the Sotloff video, was found by a group responsible for releasing the fake Osama bin Laden video years ago, directly working for the Pentagon. Very interesting. And now a top U.S. general, we played this last hour, has come out, General McCurney, and said, quote, we help build ISIS, they have Stinger missiles. Now, again, we've literally told you that thousands of times since it happened. That's now been proven accurate and admitted. And they're now bracing for what they call imminent terror attacks on the southern border, specifically Fort Bliss uh, in El Paso. We have former Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, who flew in last night to El Paso, Special reports filed at Infowars.com, video reports. He'll be joining us with inside intel on is this a hyped up threat or is it real coming up at the bottom of the hour. But what are our borders doing wide open? They shot video weeks ago and again last night of the border fences open at night and people just walking back and forth. This is ridiculous because Joe Biggs got pulled out of line and groped and grabbed with the naked body scanners. And he was talking about coming back from uh, Afghanistan through Germany one time into the United States. And he was in a wheelchair with shrapnel all over his body. And they had stuck him back in his uniform. And they, were, and they literally had Homeland Security for an hour questioning him, saying, why is there explosive residue on your uniform? And he said, are you kidding because he had a cast on his leg and his arm and stuff. And he said, you know, this was all sutured up and closed up in Afghanistan, buddy. Of course there's explosive residue. And they were so stupid that they called in the police and FBI and people until they said, yeah, let him go. That's how screwed up this country is. You got a veteran with no criminal record. They could just search his name and there was like Rolling Stone and Esquire articles about him already. In his uniform... And they're saying, why is there residue of gunpowder or explosives? And he kept telling them, with a morphine drip being pushed through, I'm flying in from Rammstein. I'm flying in from the hospital. Rick Perry has been indicted for threatening to veto state funds to a state agency administered by the county because the district attorney was running around flailing and basically resisting police, had to have a spit mask put on her, pointing her finger at him, going, boom, boom, I'll get you, and then rolling around on the ground, kicking her feet in a tantrum and biting on video. And he said, you can't run this state agency, and so they've indicted him. Dinesh D'Souza is facing 10 years in prison for giving political contributions that I think were legal. Other governors have been indicted. I'm just pointing out that veterans can't fly in America without being groped, but the border is wide open. And here it is today from CNS News. Judge sets hearings for illegal alien minors four years from now. Yeah, that's what the order is from Obama, three to five years before there's a hearing. So the judge said four years.
17-year-old Kristen stepped through the swinging wooden door separating the crowded waiting area from the judge's bench, straightening his slightly too big dress shirt as he slid behind the defendant's desk. As his lawyer took the seat beside him, which is paid for by taxpayers, he sipped on the court-approved headphones so he could hear the Spanish-speaking translator, and his lawyer began to speak. And then they went on to basically say, okay, we'll talk to you again in four years. And the next person was brought forward. Immigration group. Surge will cost schools $761 million just in the first year alone. But Boehner says Obama could get immigration reform next year. They already did it by fiat. So they're going, yeah, people are disappointed. Latinos are disappointed. We didn't get the amnesty. You already did. But again, as if people that are Hispanic should automatically want open borders. Just, oh, I, I want open borders to collapsing third world because I'm an American citizen. Because that's what you're supposed to do. And if you're a woman, you're supposed to vote for Hillary. And if you're black, you're supposed to vote for Obama. And I guess if you're from Texas, you're supposed to buy a Ford or a Chevy. I mean, it's just, it just, it's just, just mindless. Oh, I like Obama. Yeah, he gave me free health care. Really, did you get some free health care? Well, actually, my payroll tax went up. Oh, really? And they admit the death panels are real last weekend in the New York Times. Meanwhile, there are multiple reactors built right on fault lines in California with the big earthquake they had a few weeks ago. They're saying an 8.0 or bigger, university experts, seismologists, you name it, and federal experts. We went and interviewed them. They say, no, it'll go Chernobyl or Fukushima if there is a 8.0 or bigger on those fault lines. And there is the only part of the ring of fire that's not triggered yet. Southern California right up into Oregon. Why did they build the... the uh, Devil's Canyon uh, reactors, two of them. Why not build them on top of Mount St. Helens? That's probably more stable than where they built them. You know Mount St. Helens? I was at a restaurant this weekend and the manager came by. He didn't know who I was. He was wearing a George Washington crossing the Delaware tie. And I said, man, I love your George Washington tie. And he said, you know, my grandson was over this weekend and he didn't know what it was. He didn't know who George Washington was. And what does that say about that guy? He probably sees his grandkids a couple times a year. And his children have not taught them who George Washington is. There's a reason there's no Hollywood movies about George Washington. Because it was so epic. So over the top. It, it, it wouldn't be believed because truth is stranger than fiction. That's, but the military knows who George Washington is. Because the army at least taught that up until about 20 years ago. And so now they're like, George Washington, by the way, is bad. The military's, well, why is he on our Purple Heart? So now they're talking about taking George Washington off the Purple Heart. They told Navy SEALs don't wear the Gadsden flag, even though it's a flag used by the Navy and John Paul Jones, the founding of the Navy. Navy SEALs can't wear it. Because our loving government said so. And you can't say take back America because Obama said it's racist. But if Joe Biden wants to, you can see it's about them setting reality and lecturing everyone. And telling everyone what they can do and what they can't do. I mean, it's, it's tyranny. It's control freak. It's not liberal. Let's go to your phone calls. Mark in Illinois. Thank you for calling in today. Welcome. How are you doing? I'm all right. And it was amazing. I couldn't believe it. I don't know if you've seen it or not. But it's this uh, uh, Alex Israel, her name is, I guess. And then she's a former classmate of uh, Adam Lanza. And they had her on uh, CNN as she was on there speaking about Adam Lanza being her former classmate. And then she's also in this video with, uh, with James Foley. Same girl. I swear to God, Alex, it's the same girl. If you see the picture and she's saying that she's uh, James Foley's sister. It's the same girl. If you see this, you, you, it, it's amazing. It is the same girl. Well, you know, there's a lot to that with actors and things being used. Clearly, they're doing some of that. Clearly, some of this stuff is staged. Send me the info. I appreciate your call. 
you know, there's a story we're going to paste over at Infowars.com. Missing Libyan jetliners raise fears of suicide airliner attacks on 9-11. Islamists have taken over the Tripoli airport, the same people they, our government put in there, and now have nearly a dozen commercial jetliners that they could use as weapons. And again, our government three years ago put them in and took over the country. Simply incredible. And there's photos uh, of it as well with the Libyan Airways and other aircraft that are there with the burning airport now that they've uh, taken it over. Let's go ahead and go to another phone call here. Let's go ahead and talk to Matt in Washington, D.C. Hey, Alex. I just wanted to uh, say I'm a big fan and uh, been listening to you for years. I'm a Prison Planet member, and I just wanted to bring up the idea of, um, you know, compassion and how a lot of people around the country think that standing up for, um, you know, people is important and listen to your show. But I think it goes to the point that all conscious creatures need to be protected, and it, it adds to the hypocrisy I, I see in America when um, you talk about fighting for people who can't fight for themselves, and then you talk about having a brisket for, for your lunch. Break that down for me again. Well, I just feel that we talk about compassion and we care about people who can't fight for themselves, like unborn children and, you know, people, people who don't know what's, what's really going on against them uh, with the government. So I just wanted to, I, I would like your comment about how you feel about the 2012 Declaration of Consciousness that Cambridge University um, came out with saying that all creatures have consciousness and are aware of their surroundings and it i think it would help the movement if we could incorporate those two not necessarily you know the PETA extremists who want to kill the animals who who uh don't have well look lives. look that's a very look, obviously i don't like to hurt here's the thing prey animals are meant to be eaten like cows and deer and rabbits and things like that i humans are somewhat predatory in fact, Nico wanted me to cover it last week. It was a great idea. I never covered it. A study came out where they want to genetically engineer predators, lions and stuff, so they don't eat gazelles because that's, quote, mean. I mean, we are what we are. It's our nature, so it's a balance. I know this, though. The main animal rights movement has a lot of well-meaning people in it, but its main goal at the top is to take control of private property and to let government, quote, represent other life forms to then claim that it vetoes human votes. And with the rise of the robots and the rest of it, the, the globalists don't need people anymore. They don't need the large numbers of people. Uh, there's also a radical plan to phase out Earth's predatory species. Um, and we'll cover that coming up in the next hour. I want to go to more of your calls. And we've also got Joe Biggs coming up. But it's about social engineers playing God. I do agree, though, that factory farm chicken and not treating the animals humanely and not thinking about where it came from hurts us as well, not just the animals, because we get all the toxins and all the stress that they've gone through, and they start irradiating the food. They start, you know, feeding in antibiotics because they don't care about the chickens. We don't care. Use and really create a hellish world. And the more we lower our values, we don't get a better deal or higher quality. We get a very ugly, fly-by-night, one-night stand, dishonorable culture. Seth in Ohio on Ebola. Yeah, the head of the CDC says it's set to be 100,000 cases by December. This is definitely the biggest outbreak ever and I think is a real threat. What's your take on Ebola, Seth? Well, I just thought it was kind of weird that right before the information about it started coming out, I think it was on TNT or TBS, they aired a uh, series called The Last Ship. Basically about a uh, deadly virus that was loose in uh, Egypt, I think it was, and then spread across the country or the world. And then let me guess, I didn't see the show. Is there one ship left with people alive on it? Uh, you got it right. Well, one ship of ours and then the 
they uh, continually uh, fought against a, a single Russian ship. So there's two ships left in the world. They're not working together. Nope. Well, notice every theme is about how we fight with each other instead of working together. And the only way to work together is through the UN, which, again, the globalists control. That's how they control both sides of the debate. There are literally scores of TV shows and movies out about how humans are all about to be killed and the end of the world. They're just getting us ready for the controlled bioweapons release that the eugenicists are, are preparing for. Uh, and, and notice they have a vaccine coming out as well. Uh, so you can take that and be saved from the Ebola. The whole thing's very suspicious. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's basically, I mean, it's almost word for word about what's going on there and what happened on that show. You know, they uh, had a, a doctor from the CDC on the boat trying to uh, create a, uh, a vaccine. Well, I don't think they're going to release a super pandemic right away that wipes everybody out. But with all the GMO testing and cross-species manipulation going on and viral research, basically at a nanotech level, uh, it's very easy for a mistake to happen that wipes everybody out. And the globalists know that. That's why they're building human seed banks, uh, biological seed banks, uh, plant seed banks. Arcs, as they call them. It's why elites are building underground facilities, private and public, you know, for themselves everywhere at a very, very quick pace uh, because they believe the world's carrying capacity has been reached and it's going to collapse. So they want to go ahead and hasten that collapse and have a controlled demolition rather than a uh, uncontrolled demolition that may end up destroying the planet. That's their argument behind everything they're doing. Let's go to Trey in Louisiana. Thanks, Seth. Uh, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, um, I just wanted to talk about, like, youth in America, I guess. Um, I know a bunch of my friends. I'm 21 now. I've been listening since I was about 16. And there's a bunch of people who are who are awake now because of your show. And, I mean, what, what would you recommend, like, we do to try to wake up other young people in America? Because it's either, like, they're awake or they're just so far already gone that it's not even worth trying. So I just... I'm going to tell a story when we come back, uh, a, a, a allegory of that, of good versus evil. That was so epic last night. And I'm going to try to answer your question on the other side. Then we'll go to our reporters who are on the border in El Paso, where Homeland Security says a terror threat is imminent. And they believe will happen. Those are quotes by September 11th, on, uh, by or on September 11th. I don't know if that's true. We're down there investigating it. Thank you, Trey. I'm going to stay there, too. After I go through this, I'm going to go back to you and to our reporters. Info We're on the mark. We're back live. I am going to try to answer that caller's question in about 10, 15 minutes when Joe Biggs leaves us and continue with calls right through the entire next hour with a ton of breaking news as well. This just broke at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Instead of monitoring ISIS, Obama spied on Americans. Former Pentagon official reveals president has been given granular intelligence on the rise of terror group for over a year, meaning almost none, reports Judge Andrew Napolitano. You also have former top general McEarney coming out saying, quote, we helped build ISIS. ISIS is Al-Qaeda under a new name because our government and others were embarrassed over openly arming them to attack Syria. Our own military said no last year. This time last year, it was epic. Thousands of tweets with photos of officers holding signs over their faces saying, I will not fight in Syria for Al-Qaeda. General Dempsey went and said, no, we're not going to be part of it. It was a real moment of America finding its soul again, finding the moral capacity to say no. We voted down carbon taxes. We voted down having open borders. We voted down more gun control. Now Obama just does it by executive orders. So the good news is people are waking up. 
humanity understands we're in a crisis. Congress has a 7% approval rating, but the establishment doesn't care and is moving forward. So it's the immovable object running into the unstoppable force. It's an epic time to be alive right now. That's why all you know what is breaking loose around the world. It's not just here. This is a key time to be alive. Now, the heat out there is really raising havoc on our equipment with our live Skype feed. Our equipment's been overheating, so I'm going to go to them. It may cut out any minute. They've been posting HD reports every few hours to Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com and to the nightly news tonight, 7 o'clock Central. Joe Biggs, uh, staff reporter, along with our top graphics guy and cameraman, Josh Owens, uh, out there on the border in El Paso, where DHS last week said imminent terror attack on or before September 11th. They believe against Joint Task Force 6 at Fort Bliss. Biggs has a lot of Army connections there. He was a staff sergeant that got out about a year and a half ago uh, from the Army. So he has a lot of connections down there and at Biggs Field, named after his grandfather, a great-grandfather. So, Joe, you're down there. You've got the intel. You've got a lot of breaking information for us. Is this a real threat, or are they getting ready to false flag, or is it just hype, or is it people leaking memos who want to draw attention to the fact that our border is wide open? We know thousands of other than Mexicans or other than Latin Americans, as they're called, are coming across just there in Texas uh, every month, according to the Border Patrol's own internal documents. So what's the real intel, Joe Biggs? Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com in El Paso, Texas. And like you said earlier, Alex, this is an epic time in history that we live in. All the stuff that's going on right now, it's just mind-blowing. You know, the things with Russia and Ukraine, our southern borders are wide open. We have this imminent threat by the ISIS terror group in Juarez just behind me. You know, this is crazy. We funded them. These guys, they used to be ISIS, then they became Al-Qaeda in Iraq, and then they've gone back to ISIS now that Osama bin Laden is dead. You know, these guys are brutal people. They chop people's heads off, they crucify them, kill people in mass numbers. You know, the fact that the commanding general of Fort Bliss was sat down and briefed about a possible ISIS threat, that says a lot. You know, my friend is his driver, and here's a lot of the things that goes on, and they take it as a credible threat. I spoke to some of the locals here. They think it's a credible threat as well. A lot of them said that they won't even be anywhere around this area come September 11th. You know, and now we have these 11 missing planes out of the Libya airport that's been overrun. You know, crazy. We're almost, you know, approaching our 13th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. And we have all this stuff going on. You know, Al-Qaeda put out an online magazine that states that they want to hit the uh, Air Force Academy. They want to hit a military academy in Georgia. They want to hit Las Vegas. And once again, uh, New York is another target as well, Times Squares. So these are very trying times. And they now have 12 passenger jets in working order and have been photographed celebrating with them, basically saying they're going to kill us with them. I mean, either way, even if it is a false flag or if it's real, this is something they're going to use to take our, 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 uh, our liberties away. Plain and simple. We saw how easy martial law can be in place in Ferguson. Everybody saw our live streams, our use streams, our videos that were put up for two weeks straight. It was so easy overnight. For that to happen you know everything that's happening in the world right now is a step forward we're moving inch by inch closer and closer to this complete and total domination they're going to strip us of everything that we have and it's scary to be in this time but it's also a historic time in our in our lives well without giving up too much about sources there at the base and of course they're not telling you anything they're not supposed to tell you but you talked to your friend he said no we take it very serious uh, the Joint Chiefs had a planned meeting September 11th in New York. They canceled it two days before, back in 2001. Uh, Mayor Willie Brown told uh, Condoleezza Rice not to be in New York that day, San Francisco Chronicle. Uh, anybody can look this up. So bare minimum, when you yeah. get told by your one of your sources that, no, they don't plan to be on the base on September 11th, uh, and, and, and then you're also telling me they've sealed the base uh, down to two entrances is a huge base, uh, and that all this is going on, they're, they're taking it serious. Yes, you know, and, and it's with the Pentagon as well, you know, how they had moved a lot of people away from that area as well where it was struck, so that's kind of a telltale as well. You know, like you said, the two main bases, they have the Sergeant Major uh, Gate, which is at Biggs Field, and they have the Biggs Entrance, 
Those are two main entrances where there's a lot of high-ranking people, and they close those down. Then I left some of the other little smaller ones open where they go into the area and worried about it. But right behind me, if you remember, there's a spot down here where we had filmed where the gate was left wide open. I think the Border Patrol uh, has begun to watch our video. They now have, uh, well, there was two vehicles earlier. They have one vehicle posted up right now. But last night I was given some information by a lady who's lived her entire life She's about 35 years old, and right down on the uh, this main uh, strip of I-10, there's a huge part of the fence that's completely knocked over. So I'm going to go over there and check that out. But, you know, I, I, I've talked to some people, and people are like, oh, it's crazy. You know, El Paso is very guarded. It's the second safest city in the, in the U.S. There's no way that ISIS could possibly get through. Well, the thing is, though, is if we created ISIS and we run ISIS, we're going to give them the tools they need to succeed. They're a big propaganda weapon. Is, What's to stop them from driving a dump truck full of explosives right up there to the base? Exactly. And, and people are like, no, there, there's no way. There's no gaps in our border. Well, I'm going to take Josh here in a minute to a lot of spots. I know this town very well. Well, just right over here, there is no fence whatsoever. It's the river, and there's an American flag and a Mexican flag right there. And you can walk. There's no fence whatsoever. Just on the other side of the dirt line, there's a store. Last time I was here, there was a guy sitting outside with a sombrero on just hanging out. That's some you could drive across that the road leads you ought to do right what uh, you ought to do what project veritas did go to a costume shop dress up in a jihadi outfit and and just just wait across it it's like two feet deep uh, you know uh, it, man wades across uh, as bin laden in isis attack zone i mean just just to illustrate to people that okay if it's a real threat or a fake threat regardless stop groping us when we fly stop the hi highway checkpoints looking randomly for al-qaeda it's ridiculous stop hardening shopping malls and police departments when you won't even control the border it's like leave the gate open but then have the guards pointing swords at people that live inside the city it makes absolutely no sense we have hd video of it we played at the start of the broadcast today but joe tell folks about flying out from austin yesterday oh yeah it I wanted to throw up. I hate going through that process. But the funniest part, the funniest part. All right, so I'm walking up to the TSA checkpoint area, and uh, I look at the uh, the gentleman there, and I said, hey, uh, I would like to opt out and go through the pat-down process. And the lady walks over from the machine. She goes, oh, oh sir, don't, don't worry about it. There's no radiation. Look, look at the sign. It says no radiation. Just come on through. It's better. Come on. Just come on through. And I said, no, I'm not going through that. She goes, look at the sign. It says there's no radiation, though. And I said, well, how do I know? That's the same machine I saw here the other week when I flew out. The only thing that's different is now you have a sign that says there's no radiation. That doesn't make me feel any better. Well, what you about know? them so, saving the naked image? And by the way, there is radiation. Yeah, you know, they, they, they just, they've lied. And then I went through, and the guy's sitting there, and I said, well, what, what does this do? You patting me down and harassing me and as an American citizen, what does this do to secure our borders? And uh, he was like, uh, 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 you know, and stuttered, didn't really know what to say. And then I said, well, what is there? Is there truth to the fact that you guys are letting, you know, these undocumented illegals uh, fly for ID? And he said, no, 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 that, that, that doesn't happen at all. But we know it does. We've seen the reports. We have the video. It's admitted. We have their own internal documents ordering them to do it. Yeah. And the guy was just bold face lying. Everybody in that entire TSA organization, they're a bunch of PSYOP liars. I mean, they, 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 they've they sat down, they've been briefed for hours and hours, they know how to run their little game and, you know, spew forth their propaganda just to make the uh, the unawake person just ready to jump through that little machine and, you know, just get radiation and get cancer and die. They want us all to die off. So the fact that we are evil, meanwhile, we harass hard work American citizens who pay into the system and that aren't getting health care they deserve, and vets are dying, you know, what is it, What is this country gone to? I mean, what are these people doing? Well, sure. First, they said a few months ago that, oh, uh, you know, it's only in Arizona that there's secret list where we deny health care to people and let them die, veterans at the VA. Then, of course, it was at every major VA. And then it was, well, it was a mistake we didn't know. Then the New York Times comes out and goes, no, there are death panels. We can't take care of everybody. This idea that they're going to decide who to give care to. That's why you don't want socialist care, because it always becomes a rationing, folks. It doesn't work. If someone from Juarez right now comes in our country with a weapon in their truck, 
You know what's going to happen? Oh, hey, uh, excuse me, sir. Can you come over here? Uh, there's a, a hospital over here. You look like you're parked. We'll get you some water, give you an IV. And uh, if you want, sign up for some education. Meanwhile, if our Marine goes across into Mexico and makes a wrong turn, he's being held in jail for five months. And our government's doing nothing about it. Well, why are they being so racist and mean in Mexico? I mean, why don't they, you know, let him go? If, they, if, want us to, they want us to take all their garbage, but they can't, you know, do anything to help us out with this guy. This guy's been stuck over there, Sergeant Morrissey, for five months now. I know, it's because the American people it. are a joke. That's, I mean, that's, that's, we put up with anything. That's one less threat for them to worry about. That's one less threat. That's why returning vets and veterans are enemies of the state now. That's one less that they've got to worry about. That's one less trained Marine that they know can stand up and fight that tyranny. That's why they let the veterans die, because they know they don't have the ability to fight back when they start getting sick and they aren't being seen. This is all a planned, orchestrated attack on us by the Obama administration and the elites that run this entire world. This is crazy. Joe, how many times have you been to the Austin VA in the six months you've been here, how, how many times? Five times. Five times, and I haven't had one actual appointment where they do anything for me. All I do is I sit down, I see a new doctor, and I have to retell my story about what's going on, show them my metal do uh, medical documents, and then they're like, all right, we're going to schedule for another appointment. Well, then that gets scratched. They cancel it. And then I'm back. Uh, this Skype's breaking up because of the heat out there. Uh, but... Uh, you know, he coughs up blood at night. He has to have black sheets because of the blood everywhere. And uh, he's got, you know, his knees out. He's got shrapnel in his foot uh, and uh, shrapnel. And he can't get medical care. So he has to go you know, and get private insurance and take care of it that way. Uh, and we do have him back. So you're saying five times you've gone. And then each time they just send you to another appointment. Yeah, they send me to another appointment. I have to explain my whole situation over again. You know, I've, I've done so many MRIs, and every time they come back, Alex, and they go, hey, you know, you have a complete severed ACL in your right knee. That's bad. How long has this been? I said, since 2006. They're like, wow, that's crazy. They haven't tried to do surgery yet? I'm like, well, I've been trying since 2006, and you're like the 50th doctor over my, since 2006, you know, from the, the Dorn VA, the Army, wherever I've been where they just completely keep dragging me around, jerking me around, and not getting to the issue at hand. Well, you're, is, you're undoubtedly on their no-treatment list. Oh, obviously, because every time I try to go in, they just want to give me more drugs. Well, why don't you take these pills real quick? That'll help you. I was like, well, there's not a pill in the world that's going to help rebuild my ACL that's been completely severed. Stop Unbelievable. Stop shutting drugs down my throat. Stop trying to make me go insane. And I, I, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of being treated like a guinea pig, like some lab rat. Well, all these people that claim like they support, I hear you, all these people that claim they support our troops, they better actually start supporting them and getting them real health care. Joe Biggs, you're going to follow some more reports. Great job. Get out there and get it covered. Call's coming up. Open phones coming up in the third hour. Also, we found an amazing video that hasn't even gone viral yet of police wanting to go door to door without warrants looking for a felon and a man basically uh, constitutionally standing up against it. It's very informative. I'm going to play that at the bottom of the hour and post it to InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com here in the next 10 minutes. We'll also tweet it out at Real Alex Jones. Please don't forget this hour is brought to you by MyPatriotSupply.com, MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex. The super high quality, non-GMO, very inexpensive, uh, with a proprietary packaging system that makes them very portable. MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex to find their specials. Or 866-229-0927. In my view, everybody needs storable foods. This is the place to get it. MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex. We also carry their full line of food at InfoWarsStore.com. Whatever you do, MyPatriotSupply.com. Now, the caller, it was so epic last night. I hadn't been to Barton Springs but a few times this summer, so I thought I'd go to Barton Springs last night, this big, giant spring-fed pool on the side of the Colorado River. There was almost nobody there. There were all these bats flying around right at sunset over the water, huge, big pink clouds. And over the little damn spillway, there was just a bunch of people that sounded like demons, yelling and screaming and laughing and starting fights, yelling at, at, at people over the fence who'd paid three bucks to get into Barton Springs 
proper, and they sounded and looked like Charlie Manson's. But they were beyond schizophrenics. It looked like they were a, a group of men, some of them middle-aged, one of them older, just basically saying they would, that they would kill people. Ha, ah, look at you, old man. They'd see people walk around in their swimsuits and make fun of them, trying to get a rise. And finally, as they were threatening people, the police were called. And I thought about every time I'm at Barton Springs, the police are over there writing tickets for people's dogs off a leash in the area that's where the spillway of the springs come out where you don't have to pay. And a lot of nice folks are over there. But there's also a lot of trashy people. And at an instinctive level for about 30 minutes while the sun's setting, I just heard the, the, the voices and, and the meanness and the, them taunting people until they were told the police had been called and they all laughed and left. But it was weird. I was there with some of my friends and they said, look, just look at the sun setting and the moon coming up. Look at that. That's, that's good. That's God's creation. That's heaven. This way is hell. And you could see towards the Colorado, the city, the evil city and the night and these people yelling and screaming and saying horrible things as the beautiful moon came up and the sun set. And it was just an archetype of which way do you want to go? And without people even saying on both sides of Barton Springs, everyone just turned their backs on these people and looked at the sunset and the moonrise. And I walked up about 200 yards, and probably 60% of the people I saw there, when I say it wasn't busy, there were probably 100 people there instead of 1,000, like there are at peak times or more. They were all, hey, Alex, appreciate what you're doing, appreciate what your work, you know, just turn your back on them, just don't look at them. And it was like the spiritual moment as everyone turned their backs on these people as they yelled for 25 minutes. And they were back in the distance and they screamed even louder with their hands on the chain link fence like literal demons. Going, look at you, old man. You're going to die, old man. Look at your Speedos and your little such and such. I'd like to kill you. Yeah, come over here and do something, old man. Come over here. And, and, and as a man, I wanted to climb over there and literally, you know, Conan the Barbarian, at an instinctive level, tribally, 5,000 years ago, we'd have got together as men and gone over there and dealt with them. But see, now we're domesticated, so we call the police to come do it. But see, they were literally like bad guys out of the road warrior. That's what these guys were like, just truly evil. But we all turned our backs on them. We have to do that to the globalist. We have to fight them, speak out this against them, GCN, but also remove our consent at a spiritual network. level, separate ourselves from them. Louisiana. I'm going to spend this five minutes with you, then we'll come back and go to Bob and Roberto and Nate and Judy and folks that have been holding. You ask either your friends are awake or people you know are totally unawake. That's, that's how the universe works. <clears throat> you were hot and or cold, so I spit you out of my mouth. Uh, people that think they take the middle of the road, that's where you get run over. And if people aren't going to wake up now, I would just move on from them. If you want to plant some seeds, warn them. Maybe down the road they're going to listen. I grieve and, and, and feel frustrated like a, like a mouse trying to get out of a cage that's been thrown into a pond. And I kind of overheat on air and I scrabble around and I get upset because I know I'm right. And I know how epic this evil is that's growing. And I know that we have really bad people in control and that the elites have just decided to let everything go to hell in a handbasket because it is hard to manage stuff and try to have a good world. It's hard to take the high road in, in, in some respects until you've done it long enough and then, and then there's, you don't know any other way. But for people that have learned how to cheat, see, it's an economy based on cheating and manipulation rather than based on quality and a lot of that is just the general decadence of the population. So we can't just blame the establishment. That's why more and more I get emails going, hey, why are you defending the police? You're the guy that exposed the police state. Well, yeah, I wanted to stop the globalist converting our police to a police state because the globalists are in control. I'm against that. I'm not against the police. The police really believe when they're out violating rights, most of the time they're trying to actually protect people. And you're not going to wake them up just calling them a bunch of scum. And then we're going to end up having a civil war, which is bad for everybody except the controllers. 
So I don't want to be putting a pin like two roosters to kill each other. I want to be smarter than that. And I'm to blame for letting our government get out of control like this and turn our police into this or try to. You're to blame. I'm to blame for shopping at big corporate stores instead of, you know, trying to sh at thrift stores and farmers markets. I mean, I do some of that, but I know the right answers. I know how to live. I know what to do, but I don't do it. Like, I knew everybody was going to sit there and watch those white trash convict type people call people horrible names and just ha ha ha. I mean, they were demons. And I didn't go to my car and get my cell phone and call the police. But maybe that was the right thing to do. It went on for 30 minutes. They finally did call them and they laughed at everybody and left. And, and half of me was like, I don't want to call the police and use the system against these people. And they, but then I knew. I said, they'll wait. Criminals know how to wait. They'll wait till they get told the police are coming and then they'll leave. It was all just their way to be nasty and like the Wicked Witch showing up at the, at the lollipop party and, you know, urinating in the punch bowl. I mean, at a real level, justice was, when they were messing with every old man or old woman that walked by, that's what they were messing with, the weak, was to go over there, cl climb over that fence, and, you know, pick up, I mean, you know, just, uh, but, I, but, I, but that was wrong, too. Again, it, 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 last night was a microcosm of just everything else in the world where here's these horrible road warrior-like animals, and then the police come over, they're just confused and under pressure and, and, and trying to follow orders. And you got the public all sitting there in the middle. What type of culture produced trash like that? I guarantee you trash like that in the Old West wouldn't have been around very long. It's just, it's just the decadence of the society has allowed evil to grow. Dishonorable evil. There's always been slick and powerful evil, but just the weakest, most hunchback forms of it are just crawling around everywhere, growing. I'll come back to you, Terry, in a minute. Caller Trey was asking why either his friends are totally awake or they're totally unawake. And how do we wake people up? You've got to explain to people that there's an epic manipulation going on and that they're not being given the truth about how the world really works and that they've been suppressed into a false paradigm of limited information and that the mysteries of the universe are out there for them to discover and to be free men and women. This is about destiny. And that the globalists really do have it out for humanity. They really have made the decision to be selfish and to dominate. And they're bringing in a tyrannical world government. In fact, I never played this yesterday. I wanna play it today after we take calls. Paul Watson did a report, mainstream news in England, they're banning toasters and, and, and vacuum cleaners. They're reducing their power down to a level where they, they won't even toast bread. They're banning fireplaces, everything. That's now being phased in here. No one believed that they would ban light bulbs here. They did. No one believed they would bring in green police. It's happening. It's about total control. Al Gore said by 2013, the northern and southern ice caps will be completely melted. They grew by 43%, one of them this year, the other 30-something percent. That's on record. It's total fraud. Meanwhile, genetic engineering, all these other serious environmental things are going on. Google has come out with a chip that makes machines human. App summons drone with smartphone operating on brain signals. That's AFP. And it would be fine if the robots were being developed and we were creating a future that humanity would be part of. The globalists are designing the architecture where humanity as we know it will no longer exist. That decision has been made. The world is moving in that direction. So you should at least be told about it and at least know it. Bob, and then we'll go to uh, Nate and Judy and Roberto and George. Thanks for calling, Bob, from Michigan. You're on the air. Yeah, thanks for taking my call, Alex. I hope the signal or the audio is okay. Sounds good. Um, I, okay, I've been listening to you from the very beginning, So, um, and I was already concerned about the uh, executive orders and stuff way back 
Nixon, et cetera, and told people and they thought I was nuts. Well, they don't think I'm too crazy anymore. First of all, you guys, uh, your family, yourself, and your crew over there in our prayers, um, this, is, this is serious stuff. My big uh, focal point here is this Constitutional Convention, as far as I still know, is locked and loaded. And if they start uh, diverting our attention, especially to all the craziness that's out there right now that you've put up here today, um, they could go quietly and do this in the middle of the night or during a holiday. I, I just want you to know that... Um, uh, and for your listeners, that once that is convened, the Constitution itself is in suspension. And that convention becomes the Constitution. And everything that I've read, and maybe there's an update on this, but if you look back in some of the old literature, I'm sure you can Google this, uh, go look at the New States Constitution. Everything is by privilege and if they feel like it. And it. Uh, well, yeah, it's all under UN law. You have 31 points in the Declaration, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and Article 30 removes all the rights at the pleasure of the UN and the Subsecretary Generals. And I've always been against a con con, but now via executive power, they're shutting off our power, opening our borders, launching military operations, putting all this bureaucracy in place, going after the guns. And so it is a lot of libertarian. Republican movements that are pushing the con con to try to block a bunch of stuff, but we already have the Bill of Rights and Constitution and Congress that could be blocking it right now. We already have the laws, so why would more, why would a con con be needed on a balanced budget when they could just pass that in Congress? Why would a con con be needed on the Second Amendment when it's already there? I agree, it's very risky, but we're already, I, I'm not endorsing it. It's just that we're already so destroyed right now that I don't even, I mean, it's almost like pouring gasoline on a ship that's already on fire. I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, do you think good could come out of it? I mean, what do you think? No, absolutely not. I think only bad can come from it. All we need to do is get some people with a backbone up there in D.C. and tell these people no. These executive orders can be rescinded and blocked in 30 days by the Congress. Will they do it? Absolutely not. They're all bought and paid for or somehow compromised. There's just a handful of people out there right now that even uh, understand how to do this. I think we've been given all the tools we need to fight the tyranny. Well, I agree with you, and I've talked to a lot of constitutional scholars that agree with my Two years ago, I came up with my new Declaration of Independence based on Constitution. We don't have to... As the Declaration of Independence says, remove this government and, and, and get rid of this form because it's been, become destructive and it's our right duty to create a new one. The globalists have hijacked America. This isn't the republic. So we simply have the states pull out, uh, declare that the federal government's null and void, and then re-upload uh, the system uh, and, and have the legislatures vote for who they want to appoint as the new U.S. senators. That would be Rand Paul and... Ted Cruz, people like that would get elected from Texas and Kentucky. And we could basically go back to a pre-1913 upload uh, and, and restore power to the states equally under a true federalist system, uh, not the globalist system we have now where we're run by, 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 by a globalist think tank system controlling the, the, the overpowered uh, central government. I mean, we really do have a collaborator government controlled by offshore interest. We really are a captured nation. We're being used in the exploitation phase, like the communists do, to use American muscle and power to overthrow other countries now. We're in the middle of a global domination game right now. And they've blackmailed Congress. Uh, the sky's the limit. I mean, when they put our military under NATO command, and they openly arm Al-Qaeda to murder Christians, and they openly get rid of our borders, and they openly waive laws, and they openly let illegals fly but citizens can't, I mean, this is only the beginning. That's another, we ought to have a whole show about, if they've gotten away with all this, what's coming next? Because if they've already done all this, can you imagine? Can you imagine what's coming now? Well, we know it's arresting libertarians and governors and people that aren't complete communist. I mean, as bad as Rick Perry is, he's conservative compared to Obama or, or libertarian because he's pro-gun and anti-abortion. So why not just lock him up? I mean, they've got enough laws in this country where everybody's committing a crime.
And so everybody just better make a decision which side they're on right now because Katie bar the door. This is the takedown of America. And it's not going to get better. They don't want to just take it over. They want to take it over so they can persecute people, so they can have their way with us. They are criminals. People say, well, why do they want to do that? Because they're a bunch of howling, out of control, control freaks. Why would a bunch of white trash thugs want to sit there at the edge of Martin Springs yesterday screaming at old people, calling old women ugly and gross and making fun of old men and threatening to want to kill people and laughing like demons? Because they're demons, folks. That's why. Well, you got demons running the government. Can you imagine what those demons would do if they could actually have their way with people? If a whole horde of a thousand such scum would come over the hill to your little farmstead 2,000, 3,000 years ago, anywhere in the world, and what they do to your wife and children out there having a good life, look at ISIS just moves on, raping, murdering, burning, sexually mutilating, crucifying, and you look at them, they're all just like those guys I saw yesterday. Absolute trash scum and good people haven't stood up against them and we've let trash grow and now we're going to reap the whirlwind folks so sick of it bob thank you nate in north carolina you're on the air yay i made it go ahead hey um alex i've got a question for you i've just i've been i'm a relatively new listener i've i've been listening for a few months now and, and um so I have some questions. So I'm completely with you. I'm, I'm pretty much everything you're talking about. Um, you know, I hear what you're saying, but then I also hear um, things that are positive, like, you know, if we can take them on. Um, we, we pushed them back. On yeah, we, we have victory when we take action. We have victory when we find our soul again. But at the same time, we're in a death battle. What I'm saying is it's like, it's like uh, tied score in sudden death overtime right now with the New World Order. But we haven't really fielded a team. I mean, we have a few people out there. We have a kicker or two. But so just using that analogy, I don't see where we're fielding a team. Okay, so the guy that was on the news on Fox, uh, General Mac McCurney or something. Yes. I mean, here's, my, here's my question. Okay, he admitted it. We all know it. Now we know it. So where's the, the righteous people like in the streets doing something about it? So we're all, you know, there's, there's those of us. I got reporters in the streets. I'm in the streets. I hear you. I talk about it everywhere I go. I mean, I'm, you know, I, I don't know. People say uh, the government has been taken over. So we have to expose it's not a legitimate government at the federal level. We got to get our states in gear. The feds are lined up to try to crush states if the states don't get in line because they know that's the legitimate avenue to stop this. That's why we need to make friends with good people in government. See, the globalists want us to just hate the government and get in a big fight with it because that won't be legitimate and that'll bring in a greater tyranny. We have to be sophisticated. We have to reach out to good people in government. They have to reach out to us. Good people and corporations have to reach out to everybody else. Everybody's got to just affect their own circle. Come, I'm going to come back to you, Nate. Don't hang up. Is it Nate or Natalie? It's Nate. Okay, Nate, we're going to come back to you. We have to affect our own circle, promote the ideas of liberty, and also stand up to bullies and thugs everywhere you see them. If it's a corporate guy being a thug, if it's your neighbor being a thug, if it's some trashy people being a thugs, if it's cops out of line being thugs, you got to confront evil or it runs wild. No, the truth is our naivete has allowed all this to happen. And now the House Transportation Infrastructure Committee chairman has come out and said user fees, including vehicle miles taxed by the mile, is being considered for U.S. highways. And the boxes now are in all the cars by law. And you pay for it in the price of your vehicle. By the way, it's a global program. Cars worldwide now have it. Unless you're in Russia or Iran. They don't go along with it. Not saying Russia and Iran are good. They just aren't putting cancer viruses in the vaccines for their population. They haven't bought into the New World Order yet. They've bought into their own systems of corruption. Uh, but Nate in uh, North Carolina... I mean, what is your specific question or comment? You're saying, you know, Alice, you say some stuff's really positive, some stuff's really negative. Yes, we have a chance to turn things around, but we have to admit how bad the system is and how destructive 
or it's going to use the collapse of its own system to bring in an even more evil system. We have to expose their program so people are aware of it. Does that make any sense? Yes, and, and, and to, to be sounding so negative, I'm actually a very positive person, but, um, and, and I can see the light at the end of the tunnel, but it's just the bend is incredible. But um, So for me, I'm in a situation where me and just a few people are aware to the degree that you are. And so when you try to talk to anybody else, even people that at first, you know, they seem to like have their eyes open to some degree. And then very quickly, it's, you're, you're aware that not only do they not have their eyes open, but they don't even have the vocabulary and the understanding. I'll tell you what, years ago, I went to, on a, um, a mission trip to the old Soviet bloc. And we were, we were going into schools and we were talking about the Bible and we were talking about Jesus. And guess what? We could not take Bibles with us because they didn't have a foundation of understanding to even get it where the scriptures were. So what we did, we actually just took like books of Bible stories to begin to even build a vocabulary. That's where I feel like I'm at now with people is there's not even an understanding of the vocabulary. No, I agree. We need comic books like those chick comic books, uh, but, but political ones like chick tracks that, and I'm not endorsing all the stuff in the chick tracks. The point is, is that little tracks that expose the New World Order, how it works, how its system operates, so that people that are babies to all this have a basic awakening. And, and that's something I want to do in publishing, is come out with tracks that are basically dealing with liberty issues, Second Amendment, you name it, that are at cost that we can flood out to everybody. That's a great idea. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm finding more and more people that they must be sensing something's wrong because I'm hearing things like, you know, we'll have to bug out one of these days. And I have, I found that I have to let that go because I, I ask them, like, well, what do you mean by that? And then they don't have any idea what they mean by that. So it's, they have a sense of, you know, I'm in the city, things aren't looking good, I don't know, but that's as far as it goes. And that's just an incredibly few people. So I don't know, I'm looking at it, I feel like, in a global situation and I'm seeing things are in a dire situation and that it's incredibly pervasive. There's not one area. Yes. Um, I mean, if there's not one area where the righteous right or whatever, I don't know, made, made that up, is like moving to the forefront and, and winning. I mean, I don't see one area where we've taken. Well, that's why Matt Drudge said last year everybody should have an emergency exit plan out of this country. That's why they're making it so hard to get out now. I hear you. Thank you so much, Nate. We're going to come back and go to Judy and go to Roberto and go to Gary and go to George. And that's it for calls because I got a bunch of news I need to get to here uh, as well. Uh, there's just so much of it. Uh, scorned former first lady says Hollande or Hollande kiss and tell says that he hates the poor. Well, of course he hates the poor. The socialists in France pay almost no taxes, have Swiss bank accounts, and don't get in trouble for it. The anti-free market people, of course they hate the poor. They're always exempt from it. They've got red carpets and jet airplanes and bodyguards. Whether it's Dianne Feinstein or Al Gore or any of these people. Rupert Murdoch's anti-gun and has got bodyguards. Whether it's just any of them, they're all frauds, folks. They know how the world works. They've joined the elite. They're preying on people. The Republican leadership is preying on Republicans. And the Democratic leadership is preying on Democrats. They're part of a corrupt political elite of fraudsters who, who are dishonorable to the core. Quentin Tarantino, all of them, a bunch of race-baiting, divide-and-conquer, demon-slimebag fraudster trolls. Paul Watson's nanny state report, this new cop video that we just tweeted out at Real Alex Jones, of a man stands up for his constitutional rights when they were going door to door without a warrant, quote, looking for a felon. And you can say, well, that's for our safety, but why'd we have a Bill of Rights before that said you can't do that? Because it always turns into a tyranny. Ebola patient escapes quarantine center in search of food. Not even feeding him. We have the Jakari Jackson breakdown on the sex tape release. Here's the headlines. Leaks of nude celebrity photos raises concerns about security of the cloud. Folks in the past didn't take their sex photos 
or photos of their girlfriend or whatever into the local shop to get developed because they wanted privacy. Why would you upload them to a cloud? And again, you were the one that reminded me of that and made that point, CJ, that what are people thinking? I can't possibly begin to imagine what they're thinking except for being lazy. Um, we used to have these great little stores in the grocery store in the mall where you can get your photos developed and family photos were appropriate, but if you had any naughty photos, you'd use a Polaroid, an expensive uh, device that uh, develops pictures instantly for all you young folks that are wondering what a Polaroid is. Well, it's also the police state issue. Uh, remember all the cases where it would be like two little girls with towels around them and they're hugging each other and they take their kids, even though the social workers say there's no evidence of sexual abuse? Uh, I mean, it's, 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 look, keep your private stuff private, ladies and gentlemen. It's just ridiculous. You got the Hunger Games bombshell and all of them hopping mad that they wanted to swap naked photos. Sex tapes are coming out. What did you people expect? It was Apple so you could trust it? The NSA data mines it. Jakari Jackson's report is coming up on that subject. This is all designed the cloud is designed so they can snoop on you. So, of course, hackers can then exploit that. Use your brains, people. All right, I want to rush to these calls. So i got like four or five video clips I want to get to. Judy in Florida, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. You're on the air. Hi, Alex. Um, I wanted to say one thing about Joe Biggs in the TSA line and the, the pat down that he experienced i i really think he used a tremendous amount of restraint and was a gentleman because that guy was dominating him and liking it oh yeah uh, that guy was a nemesis i mean I, I i just thought it was disgusting because the guy knew who he was i know he knew who he was and he was doing it really hard too him. yeah it was a complete jerk it's like it just grosses me out um, but I had a TSA. But see, that's government here. training us to that we put their, you know, we, we get their hands put on us. But then the border's wide open. It's just all a sick joke. But they know they they, they know that we know it's a joke. But you know, even those that are halfway awake. It, but it's just I, I can't believe the domination. I mean, I do, but I don't. It's it's, it's just ridiculous. But um, I wanted to, to you know just bring up. Um, this discussion has been up, up to my, you know, being able to talk to you has been really astounding because I was thinking earlier as I was working about how there basically needs to be like more compassion where, where it's, con you know, people are concerned because I know the people that I talk to that are like customer, customers of mine or just people in general. When, when I know when I woke up, which was in 2001, when the major event occurred that I, for a couple of days, I couldn't get out of bed. I mean, that's how devastating, how shattered my paradigm was. And, you know, I, I wanted to die. That's, that's how I felt like. I wanted to die because, you know, everything that I thought was reality was not. And I, I hear people say, well, you know, I'm going to be gone off this earth soon or, you know, God's going to take me or, you know, oh, I just want to bury my head in the sand. I mean, I hear these terms. And it's like, you know, when I look at there's been a couple of conversations I've had with men where I see the fear in their eyes. And it's like, I don't know if there's a different way that needs to be developed to talk to people. You know, I, I, I'm no expert. Well, you're you know, right. A lot of people you talk to about the New World Order, they feel so disempowered in their own lives. They know stuff's wrong, but don't tell me about it. What can I do? Well, you can stand up for yourself. You can have some respect. You can help other people. All of us having a better attitude, being a free people, will turn this around. I've talked about, you know, you know, Start working on the local level. You know, I know that I've invited Rosa Quarry to come to my area, and hopefully she's going to be able to come in November. I mean, I'm in email correspondence with her now, but it's like, you know, I know a lot of really rich folks that have no idea what sustainable developments are all about, but I know enough to know they're already being affected. So exactly. So you educate them, then they learn how they're being scammed. They'll start standing up against it. Because if you get the nouveau riche, if you get the middle class, the upper middle class, the wealthy aware of what's going on, they will then understand the larger paradigm and we'll have a new renaissance. Great points. I'm going to go to Roberto in New York, then I'll go to video clips and then back to George and Gary. Roberto, thanks for calling. You're on the air. Yes, hello, Alex. It's a pleasure to speak to you. Nice to talk to you, brother. Yeah, I, I realize that the globalist 
they they kind of count on, on us to be non-critical thinkers. Like, um, when you turn on the TV, all you hear about is terrorism, terrorism, terrorism. And then when they cover the border, it's all about, oh, don't be racist, you know, you know, don't be racist. And and that's kind of like, to me, a father not wanting his daughter to get pregnant, but giving his daughter a bottle of vodka, a hotel room, and 500 bucks on prom night. It, it just doesn't make any sense. It's like a accident waiting to happen. And, I mean, bare minimum, there's been, uh, it's come out that the cartels and the extremist groups have been in contact talking. And I don't understand why it's getting no coverage. Like, no one's making that connection. I hear you. It, it, it's because all these different corrupt cartels, whether it's the drug cartels, the pharma cartels, the police state cartels, the big banking cartels, the Saudi Arabian cartels, they know how to go get influence. They know how to buy politicians. They know how to cut people in on the piece of the action. And now corruption's growing, and it's just eating up the whole economy. And now they have Agenda 21 in the nanny state meant to, you know, get patents on hair dryers that are low wattage, and then you can only buy it from them. I mean, it's, it's, it's just where the whole economy is geared, where only General Electric can have a coal power plant, nobody else can. And where only, you know, this company can operate, or, or only McDonald's gets a health care waiver, which then makes their food less expensive. I mean, it's just, it's, 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 it's a gamed rig system, where the whole world is a cross between Las Vegas and a gulag, or the gulag archipelago, uh, or the casino gulag that Max Kaiser talks about. Thank you so much for the call. Speaking of the nanny state and, and, and Rosa Cora, Corey uh, and, and Behind the Green Mask book that we sell at InfoWarsStore.com, dealing with government and its takeover worldwide, we're under UN treaty, even though we haven't signed on to it. Obama came out this week on Monday and he said, I will put in the carbon taxes on all human activity, a value-added tax on basically all human activity, food, produce, fuel, plastic, electronics, how they can work, air conditioning, carpeting, just, just everything, basically. We'll have a carbon tax, which also brings in government surveillance, government compliance, where mom and pops can't operate. I mean, Australia's been under this five years, and it crippled them, so they're voting it out right now. In fact, they just did. But this is about control. We'll tell you what you can have in your house. We'll tell you what you can do. Nothing to do with the environment. Let's go ahead and go to Paul Watson's report. The nanny state EU has banned many types of vacuum cleaners and is also set to prohibit kettles, toasters, hair dryers, and lawnmowers in the latest example of Eurocrats gone wild. Two years after a complete ban on incandescent light bulbs, today saw the start of a ban on vacuum cleaners that use over 1,600 watts of power, all in the name of preventing global warming. That same global warming, which over the last two years has resulted in an increase in the Arctic sea ice cap by 42% or 5.6 million square kilometers, the same ice cap that Al Gore said would vanish completely by 2014. But even if you believe in the dogma of man-made global warming, this EU ban on appliances still makes no sense. If you cut the power of hair dryers by a third, then what are people going to do? They're simply going to use their hair dryers for a third longer. What kind of frigging imbeciles are coming up with these policies? The ban on high-powered vacuum cleaners, or in other words, ones that actually work, has caused a run on popular models in the United Kingdom, with sales soaring by over 50%. Retailers now face government inspections and the prospect of being shut down if they sell anything over a pathetic 900 watts. But that's not all. The European Commission plans to impose energy limitations on another 30 electrical items next year, including toasters, lawnmowers and kettles. And remember, while the EU does its level best to hamstring the free market with pointless restrictions that won't even save energy, China and India are building hundreds of coal-fired power plants every year. This has nothing to do with saving energy or saving the planet. This is about the nanny state burying its tentacles deeper 
into our private lives, choking consumer freedom and strangling a free market already labouring under an ongoing recession throughout Europe. And it's another perfect reason to get Britain out of the EU if David Cameron ever has the balls to graciously bestow us with a national referendum. Check out the other videos, subscribe to the channel. I'm Paul Joseph Watson. This is Infowars.com. There you go. There is that breakdown. I want to go to this very powerful cop video here in a moment that's up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Man stands up for the Constitution as police demand to enter home without warrant. But Kit Daniels just broke a story up at Infowars.com, and I'm glad he reminded me of this. Missing Libyan jetliners raises fears of suicide airliner attacks on 9-11. That is the Bill Gertz article. It's up on Drudge. But if you go to Infowars.com, we have an update. Flashback. 13 airplanes vanished from radar months before theft of jetliners in Libya. Then we see the same make and model of the Malaysian aircraft disappear around Diego Garcia. And then another one magically gets shot down over Ukraine. Alleged hack attack took down air traffic control system in June highlighting current dangers of missing jets. The disappearance of 11 jetliners in Libya brings to mind the 13 planes that vanished from radar in Europe due to the reported hack attack, highlighting a scenario in which commercial jets invisible to radar are purposely crashed into cities and other critical infrastructure. And that's also a way for them to claim planes disappeared and then have them pop back up later. Uh, back in June, two unprecedented blackouts caused 13 planes flying over Europe to disappear from radar screens, leaving air traffic controllers with no information on their location. Speed detection or height and the series of blackouts lasted up to 25 minutes. Several reports suggested air traffic control systems were hacked, according to the Telegraph. Planes disappeared from screens for a matter of seconds here and there. A German air traffic control spokesman said it must have been an external source of disruption. Yeah, they just like on 9-11 their screens blacked out or other simulated planes got put in by NORAD and other centralized DARPA systems that have control. See, they have back doors on the cell phones, the cloud, your smart meters. These are the little robots that are in control of everything, controlled by Skynet, the globalist eugenicist. <clears throat> and so now they're announcing in Tokyo, robot cops to watch the public, robot cops to be in malls in England, robots to serve people their food at hotels and hospitals. And again, robots won't tattle if you're being given a lethal injection nobody knows about. Robots won't care about war crimes. Robots won't say no delivering Stinger missiles to Al-Qaeda. It's the fact that we are entering an absolute science fiction time. Let me tell you, nobody should be bored right now because this is an epic time to be alive. Let's go to this video. We just tweeted it out at Real Alex Jones, easiest place to find it on Twitter or Infowars.com. Man stands up for his constitutional rights as police demand to enter his home without warrant. This is the way to handle the police state. He's polite, he's focused, he knows his rights, and they say, who you been listening to? And they were going door to door, knock, 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 we're looking for a felon, show us your ID. Not, hey, your neighbor saw you climbing in this house, do you live here? Or, hey, your alarm went off. That would be reasonable. They would have a reason to, just to come to your house, though. Hey, uh, we think the Boston bomber may be somewhere in the city. Come out with your hands up. And you're a blonde-haired woman or a black woman. You know, you're not the young man they're looking for. This is a police state. You can argue, well, the end justifies the means. No, it's never been allowed here, but it was allowed in Soviet Russia and Nazi Germany and North Korea. It is dangerous. It is evil. It is going to destroy this country. I don't care if the feds give you training to do it. It's wrong. Let's go to this video and audio. Hello, who is it? Uh, hello. Can you turn it off? No, I can't. Okay, I said turn it off. No. Yes. Yes. Turn it off. Do you I have a warrant? Do you, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We have a baby here. Myself, okay. okay, let me explain okay. yourself. I'm a sure the sheriff's department. We're looking for a wanted felon. Okay, he's not okay. here. He's not turn here. Turn it off because I don't know what it is. It's a cell phone. You don't see put it in my is. face. Don't put it in my hold face. What's your name? I don't have to tell you that. Do you have a warrant? Okay. First of all, I mean sure. three types of ID. Okay. Explain who you are, because you could be anybody dressed up in a uniform. Really? By the Supreme Court, yes. You, you want to play games? I'm not playing yeah, games. I'm going to drag you out if you, if you, 
Yeah. That's why I'm recording okay. this. Straight to YouTube. Is there anybody else in the house? Then? No, there's nobody else in the house. There's me and my family. That's it. Okay, let me explain it to you, okay? We got a female in the apartment complex, just got beat up by her parolee and large boyfriend. I right? watched the whole thing. You did? Yes. Okay. From then my why window. don't you help us and step out and tell us what's going on? I seen the dude walk off. I seen him. I heard him arguing. Ooh, Do you know? I, no, I don't. I okay, see him. That you guys okay. are friends with him. No, I see him in my. I, okay. He's Do my you neighbor. Have an ID? As far as that, no, I don't have to describe that to you. Do you have a warrant? Or do you suspect me of committing a crime? I don't know. You could be harboring a fugitive. I'm you not could be harboring a fugitive. I know. I'm not. In here. There's nobody in here. If you want to check, please go get a warrant. There's nobody else in here. Sir, just show us ID and then we'll make if sure you're, you're not him. Not him. I'm not him. Like. I'm not him. Okay? We don't know what he looks like, okay? Okay. Show us your ID, okay. guy. She'll we'll explain to you what he looks like. Describe what he looks like. Okay. Okay, she can describe what he looks like. I don't have to describe my ID. Hey, grab your ID. You like, have you, still not performed me three fourths I ID. I don't know what tattoo. I don't know what you got. Okay, the woman Russian is behind him and called the cops. She knows it's not him. You guys are in violation of color and law. Okay. Because you are at my door with guns. And I have failed for my life. I have not committed no crime. This is this is law. I have not committed a crime. We're suspecting a fugitive. Okay. No, I am not harming a fugitive. Okay. Because you have no evidence, video, or audio of me having a fugitive. You are going off words. Okay. That's why we're here to check it out. Okay. There is no fugitive. Okay. We're all neighbors here. You need to knock on everybody's door. Okay. Not if they said they came here. Okay. No, they didn't come here. Okay. Why would he say he came here? I don't know. You He didn't come here. I don't know why. Okay. Okay, so you We're saw, all saw him walk away? Where he, walked he walked away. To the back. Straight to the back. I don't know well, what's going on in the back. Out, There's another keep subject. Your hands out. Okay. What's going okay. on? What's going on? I just told you what I seen. Can we that's check it. your house? Get a warrant. Would you allow us to check your house? Get a warrant. Thank you. Thank you. Close the door. All right, I just skipped that network break because this is so important. Now, again, those cops overall are being pretty reasonable after they first try to act like the phone's a gun and, you know, say, hey, you better watch it. I'll drag you out of here and all the rest of it. They then back down and are more reasonable. Clearly, the woman's right there behind him saying she thinks he went in there. And then if the police did see somebody hiding back in there, they would have probable cause to come in. But no court is going to hold that up that this woman says she thinks he went in there because they're neighbors and that he walked off. The point is, do you want people showing up at your door going, hey, the neighbor thinks that he came in here. I mean, my dad has a neighbor. My dad's got four acres in the middle of town that he bought 20 years ago, and now it's gotten all built up around it. And I'm not trying to be mean. These people all have Democratic Party signs around it. And I'm just, they're incredible control freaks. They're always calling code enforcers on each other. It's just ongoing. I, I, met my, I go to my parents at least, you know, once every couple of weeks with the kids to swim in their pool. And they got like rope swings and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's like a park over there. And I've been there three times the police have been called. One time my daughter was in the heated pool. And my son was filling up the water gun with cold water shooting her, and she screamed. It was obviously a little girl screaming, having a good time. And the police showed up and literally said, well, your neighbor said they thought they heard someone being beaten and attacked. And the cops said, D you know, do you just, you know, mind if I just uh, look in, you know, your front door? And my dad's right there because we'd already gone in from the pool. He looked in, everybody was fine. We just stuck his head in. He said, okay, sorry, see you later. We could, now, he could have said, no, 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 you can't. But we're just sitting there. The front door's right there. The living room's right there. We're sitting there having, you know, dinner. Yeah, man, we're all family. Everything's fine. See, look. But then the cops went down. The neighbor was waiting and was sitting there waving their arms, wanting us to get in trouble. The other two times... There's a neighborhood back behind my parents where they shoot fireworks, and that same neighbor, it's always got 15 Democratic Party signs in her yard, I just think that's interesting, calls the cops, and they come. This is two times I've been there, and we're sitting there barbecuing or whatever, hanging out, and they're like, yeah, we got a report of fireworks, we're just going, uh-huh. My parents have a fire pit out there by the pool. We're just like, no, we're not shooting fireworks off. But... 
That's the country we live in. So, so much of it is used to, you'd have a family unit in a tribe, and if some man beat up a woman bad, the brother or the father would come over and deal with them. We don't have families like that anymore. We have men in uniforms that show up. And I like how the guy points out, why don't you go knock on all the doors? Because I've already dealt with this with these neighbors that like to call the police the drop of a hat. Out in the country where I've got a place for my family. All my neighbors have had the police called on them. Including myself, but they didn't know who was doing it, so they drove by. And I was going somewhere, so I didn't talk to them. If you shoot a rifle or shotgun on your own property, all these Californians, and we've talked to the neighbors, they're all Californians. I've been back there shooting a shotgun before with my children in the middle of the country. And I hear screaming 300 yards away down the creek with, with a woman and children running. And I'm shooting a shotgun the opposite direction into a clay embankment shooting targets with my children, a 410. And I hear, they're shooting, ah, ah, ah. I mean, 300 yards away, like screaming bloody murder, running up the hill, hyperventilating. A lot of this is just the degeneration of society and just the absolute mindlessness of it. But you can err on the side of, yeah, let the cops come in. Let the cops do whatever they want. That will always turn into a nightmare. That's all I'm saying. Like it's been known for a long time, the cops want to search your house without a warrant. They claim a 911 call came in. There's just a lot of this stuff going on, and it's got to be dealt with. That's my only point on that front. I want to go to George and Gary with a little bit of overdrive if we need to to talk to them. Before I go any further, please remember this entire broadcast is listener-supported. The nightly news, the documentary films, the special reports, <coughs> the magazine, the reporters going around the country and the world. Everything we do, the news websites, the studios, everything. So we bring you the highest quality supplements, water filtration, pro-gun, pro-liberty t-shirts, ball caps, belt buckles, InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com for the high quality supplements, the super male vitality, the super female vitality. I mean, it's the best stuff out there in my view. Nothing else like it. Uh, the Occupower, the Survival Shield X2, Nason Iodine, you've heard the rave reviews. Take the challenge, buy a couple bottles of supplements, see what it does for you. Talk to your physician or healthcare provider if you got any questions. Give us a call toll free, we can answer all your questions. Tell you about any of the specials we're running. 888-253-3139. 888-253-3139. And also spread the word about our AM and FM affiliates. Spread the word about their local sponsors or become a sponsor of our local stations and keep spreading the word. We're all in this together. Let's talk, and I want to thank you all for your support. Subscribe to the Nightly News, PrisonPlanet.tv. George in Connecticut, um, go ahead. Thanks for calling. Hi, I'm, I thought of uh, three possible uh, solutions to uh, getting uh, these globalists and throwing them back. Uh, I call my first uh, suggestion, law back the grenades. Uh, basically taking all their incidents, say like the border situation, and making it a major incident uh, and, and combining things. Take the vets, take the Tea Party and people like that. They call us all... Uh, put on the special list. Let's all go down to the border, have a party, uh, and basically seal up the border, and all the gun people uh, at the border will have a gun show, a barbecue, and maybe some sort of, uh, uh, you know, a concert or something like that. Make a big thing of it. Get th hundreds of thousands of people to get down there and uh, and show that 80% of the people, it's the number one issue in the country. That's the first suggestion. It's a great and idea. you got to stop the infiltrators. They'll try to provocateur, but yeah. And a second point may be calling Operation Break the Bubble. Most of these globalists are in the little bubble because they don't have any reaction from, from these situations. What we should do is, I suggest... Hold on, stay there, George. This is genius. I want to come back to you. Yeah, no. Go to their businesses, go to their houses, go to their public events, get tickets to their speaking events, and get in their face, make them uncomfortable, let them know you're aware of their program, and let everybody else be aware so that when all this stuff comes down, they get the blame. They're not going to escape Nuremberg II, not George Soros, not Hillary Clinton, when Al-Qaeda attacks Benghazi, Libya, they did this. Obama and the globalists launched Libya. Now Al-Qaeda's running around murdering everybody. They need to pay for it.
love this headline confusion. Congressional Black Caucus campaign against militarized police equipment after voting for it in June. More schools across the country are kicking Michelle Obama's program out. Obama, her, her school lunch program, Obama says we will not be intimidated by ISIS. What a joke, folks. The globalists helped create it. It's just so sick. That's some of the stuff up on Drudge. A lot of new headlines up on Infowars.com as well. Uh, George in Connecticut, you were bringing up solutions. Uh, go ahead and recap that second one you were getting to. Yeah, the operation break the bubble uh, from these uh, globalists, because once they feel that they're basically people know who they are, what they're doing, uh, uh, like you said, go to their office, things like that. But other things, uh, find out their fax numbers, whether it's their business or whatever. Send them, send them postcards uh, from all around the world so they know that they're, they're, they're being uh, attacked, uh, or not attacked, but are basically uh, being noticed from around the world so that it's not just our country, so there's nowhere they can go. Uh, yeah, they want us to know they're watching us. We're watching them. Right. And then the third point I'm calling uh, uh, drone, drone the trees and basically maybe make a, a $100 a reward for for uh, uh, using these uh, pro cameras with a, with a drone going over these places where they collect these illegals and stuff or any sort of illegal operation that the globalists are doing and then record it so that it becomes a, a major issue. Absolutely. Record everything. Become your own press. Confront globalists, Congress people, you name it, when they're out in their districts. Call into talk radio. Just make the focus being free and fighting this tyranny. You'll meet like-minded people. It's fulfilling. It's, it's not exhausting to be involved. It's empowering. They've sold the idea that being informed, being involved is boring. No, the animating contest of liberty that Jefferson called it is what it is to be alive. God bless you, George. Last caller, thanks for calling. Gary in Texas. Yes, Alex. Hi, uh, I'm a first-time caller. Welcome. Um, uh, are you familiar with Richard Day? It rings a bell. Who is he again? From the Rockefeller Planned Parenthood. Oh, yeah. I think I've had him on the show. Correct. Well, he's now deceased. Oh, okay. really? Um, yes. Let me explain something. Okay. They all talked about all of this stuff that's coming out now in 1969. They talked about a global police state. They talked about terrorism. Uh, MI6, Mossad, CIA. So all of this is coming true now. And they also talked about using nuclear bombs to convince people we mean business. Yeah, well, recap Richard Day. Was he the guy in Colorado who was in some of their meetings? Uh, Pittsburgh, actually. The Pediatric Society? Yeah. Yeah. So... Plus, well, yeah, there were a lot of doctors and scientists that got brought into these meetings because that's who they recruit. They tried to recruit my dad at UT because he was at the top of his class right out of high school. Um, and, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it, it is the program, and they're really doing it. Uh, John Kaufman, who wrote the Committee of uh, 300, was in MI6. I mean, it just everything he wrote 25 years ago has come true. This stuff's real. I mean, it's just crazy. We talked about the financial system of the bankers. Of course, the financial system in Europe has to collapse first before it will collapse here. Well, I know this. They're having an organized collapse to bring in their system. I mean, it's all out in the open now. We just have to fight to wake people up. And I'm saying we've gained more ground the last five years than we gained the last 50. So we're gaining ground, but they're already way ahead of us. But we're in the fight. So we just got to continue to shine light on the corruption, expose it. The police and military are waking up. The general public's waking up. Don't get discouraged by people that are in a trance and are zombies. They're victims. They don't count now. They're not in the game. Great job to the crew. Very important nightly news tonight, 7 o'clock Central, prisonplanet.tv. Be sure and subscribe. Or if you are a subscriber, 11 people can use your membership. Share it with folks. All right. God bless you all. See you back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central.